viewers and content consumers. Time today for a little action master action with Super 7 Ultimate's Transformers Banzai Tron. Now, if you're anything like me and you don't know who Super 7 is, yes you do. That's the company that makes like 70% of nerd shop stock on any given day. They seem to have access to every pop culture license that ever existed. From 80s cartoons to cult movies to sports stars and even musical icons like Biggie Smalls, ODB and the Napalm Death Scum Demon. Seriously. That's a weird thing to merchandise. And there are no newcomers to Transformers either. They make those little reaction figures and all that other weirdo merch that lingers on the shelves when they ain't got any real Transformers in. <laughs> Listen to me, real Transformers. I guess part of me does feel that way. There's always something deep down that nags at me that toys of Transformers don't count unless they transform. And yet, I love Action Masters. Which is why I appreciate that Super 7 decided to lean into this much maligned rigid robot rabble in the TF branch of Ultimates, a premium line of oversized action figures with all accessories and swappable heads and hands and whatnot. That first wave was a wild ride, right? We got Optimus Prime, obviously, along with a sparkly spectral Starscream, Bombshell, but specifically the Action Master version of Bombshell, and forgotten deep cut charisma grenade Banzaitron. And oh boy, I cannot believe my luck. Because Banzaitron was a huge few fave during the Action Master era, or Action Master era. He absolutely stole my little heart with his unique design, cool but stupid name, and sick nasty palette. And I always enjoyed that I didn't have the faintest clue what he turns into. I mean, half the fun of Action Masters is guessing what thing they were designed after. Like, Power Flash was clearly a plane. Jackpot and Axor were cars and have been cars. Croc, obviously a fucking iguana. But Banzi Sinatra here was something of an alt mode enigma. Cause look at him, there's no visual clues or design cues that allude to anything other than cool robot. I can't even say that I like the character, cause he's never in anything. Simply a sick looking robot with a neat gun, a crab friend, and a mastery of the ancient cosmic art. <sighs> Crystalocution. And the thing is, it never felt like effort to accept him alongside faces like Inferno or Prowl, because my fictional Transformers foundation was mostly just the movie and the Marvel comics, both of which were rife with just weird guys filling out the universe. I was practically raised on non-transforming characters with ropey names, so why wouldn't Banzai-tron just be one of those? Just some rando who liked the cut of Megatron's jib and signed up to the Decepticons. And I think that's why Ultimates appeals to me while Transformers Red didn't, precisely because Banzaitron never transformed, and it never feels good when they make it. Like, it was briefly a tank in 2010's Hunt for the Decepticons, which didn't hit for me. We love that bludgeon toy, but for me, it only works as bludgeon. And even then, only bludgeon in full phase sixer skeleton monster maniac mode. That thing is unhinged. It's way too much for the Archbishop of Banzabury here. There's enough tank-coded Decepticon action masters, and he ain't one. Same deal with his concurrent cameo in Takara's snazzy car set Alternity as a strange swan song for the Mitsuoka Orochi design, which was the Seeker mold of the day, so there'd already been three of it. And I collect Skywarps, so I already had one, and I already didn't like it. Just a horrible, wibbly ass, fall into pieces ass toy. Stupid, douchey, bougie car mode. Kudos to Alternity or whatever. But this sucks. Banzaitron is better than this. And giving him sloppy seconds on the, I guess, foamy fourths on this mold just felt like the most paltry of table scraps. And that Botcon toy? A boat? He's a martial arts legend, not the bleeding splish splash show. So ultimately, Super 7 ultimately, I don't think I want Banzai Tron to transform. Nothing's gonna fit. It's always gonna feel improper, incorrect. And Ultimates definitely feels like an appropriate medium to celebrate Action Master kind. So yes, Super 7 Ultimates Banzi Reagan comes in a tremendous trapezoidal plastic prism, flaunting a fabulous classy slip cover with a gnarly grid portrait and a sweet lime green design. Decepticon badge. Deeply dig the tech spec and the tubular fonts and colors. And I can't tell you how weird it is to A, open up a Transformers product and have no instruction leaflet in there, and B, even see a package like this for a character like fucking Banzaitron. Like Leonardo, sure. Lion-O, definitely. Cliff Burton, Okay, but Banzaitron? This is never gonna feel normal. Now the figure it's- oh god. The figure itself is a hard hit of high impact heinousness. Tough to the touch, heavy in the hand, and pretty much aesthetically perfect. I mean, it looks just like it. This is a borderline 
flawless upscale, with his every inexplicable detail magnified and reproduced with evident reverence. Rever evidence? Rev evidence? River dance? There's just so much to love about Banzai Tron's design, man. Check out all the fun textures, like the orange tummy tabs and ribbly shoulder pipes, to the little fake out backpack with the cheeky implied port that actually isn't where the port is. Face is fantastic, looking like the love child of Predator and Megalon, with his ill-defined salmon-y mouth parts, Space Emperor Shredder helmet, and piercing painted yellow eyes. And like, the ribbed side panels here almost look like wearable padding. His whole vibe is like low to mid-level sci-fi costuming. It looks like a baddie of the week from Red Dwarf. Colours are absolutely popping here! And they're honestly not a 100% match for the original. The darks are a little darker, the greens are a little limier. They definitely whack the contrast up, and he's all the more striking for it. I'm always surprised by how little purple there is. Like, in my head he's a purple guy, but I mean, who doesn't love thighs? They do seem to have spaced on the orange shin vents though, and I can't say I love that Decepticon badge. I just think he looks so much better without that huge silver foil smash. I think the first thing I did with my childhood one was peel that off. This one ain't coming off for nobody. We can deal, right? I've never known what the deal is with that little cursive M on his chest either. Do we think maybe he's a Mysterian? Like Brawn and Winchuck? Probably not. <laughs> Point is, it looks great. It makes an awesome display statue or a desk toy. The feel is fiercely fulfilling. Plastic's pleasantly hard and rubbery with just the right amount of give, and it can be crazy expressive and super fun to fiddle with when it wants to be. It's like reluctantly fun. My favourite Pink Floyd song. Because these joints are weird, man. Like, they're oddly stiff and limited, and it takes a minute to figure out how they work and what they're capable of, or comfortable with. Shoulders are frustratingly outwardly curtailed. They go that far, and that's it. Bro can't T-pose for toffee. Elbows are very specific in what they want to do. Ankles are just cack, but the wrists are great. I do love the little ab crunch and freeform waist swivel. Got a decent head wobble on him, so he can be pretty cool around the joints. Anyway, as for accessories, Big Bands Ferdinand here comes with noticeably less loot than a lot of Ultimates. Probably because, let's face it, he's got nothing going on. None of those variant heads or emotive options. No member berry episode artifacts. Just laser gun, crab, karate hands. Done. I mean, he's done all right. The hand selection's pretty punchy. With a couple of fighty fists, accessory grip hands that double as a just chillin' pose, plus a bit of fingery flair with the King Diamond Death Claw and the little two finger thing, whatever that one is. Pistol's looking positively powerful there, all black and bayoneted and dinobotty. And I just noticed he can hold it that way up, like a machine gun machete, like a machuti. Look, I use that joke as much as I want, it's amazing. However, I don't know how razor sharp makes me feel. Like, it's stunningly sculpted, with his little crustacean-y crawlers and all the pock marks and his weird non-facey face. Is that his face? Are these his eyes? I've never known. But it's just a single plastic slab. It can't do anything, it can't interact. Zero moving parts, barrels going nowhere, the gun doesn't plug in. Can't any of this work? You can't even plug his head into Banzai Tron's foot for the standing scuttle ride. Like, the peg just the wrong size, or the port is, either way you're knackered. It's actually kind of upsetting, it's like a memorial to Razor Sharp. I didn't expect spring-loaded gimmicks, but it does nothing, except for simply being present and visible. And sometimes, that's enough. But not here. Trash. And also, I'm not going to pretend that this fits in with the collection anywhere. The aesthetic doesn't quite jive with contemporary generations. He's the size of a big Voyager, which is weird. Action Master's a little guy, isn't they? But what's new, right? Ooh, Action Master in doesn't fit with other Transformers, sensation. Ooh, shocker. But look, man, Bans Lerman here is a fantastically fun figure. It feels good. It plays okay. It always looks great. And it's a more extravagant release than I ever thought this character would receive. It feels like the logical manifestation of what an action master masterpiece would be. Or an action masterpiece, if you will. It's just so refreshing that it doesn't try and elevate him out of action masterdom, and instead elevates the idea itself. But still, it is a weird one. I mean, in the bigger picture, the most interesting thing about this toy is the unlikelihood of its production. Because given the wealth of bankable faces among the Transformers footprint, I really respect that Super 7 chose not to throw another Bumblebee or Megatron into the market. But at the same time, they definitely overestimated the audience for this. I mean, we're all about limited appeal keeping it real, but holy shit! The demographic for a $60 Banzai Tron toy has got to be... 
just me and like six of my friends. What incentive is there for the general reader? It's a transformer that doesn't transform. It's a character that's not in anything and it's crazy expensive. It's a friggin' checklist of disappointment. Come on, who else is gonna want this? Who else is gonna want a video about this? I mean, even among my audience, even among the kind of weirdos that choose to watch a show like this on purpose, I bet 80% of you wouldn't be asked, would you? Answer me that in the comments. Would you buy this? Who is gonna take a chance on this? Why would you? Out of all the action figures out there, the Star Wars, the Ninja Turtles, the Marvel, the other Transformers that can transform and that people know, out of everything, why is this the one you're gonna pick up? It's just so weird to me that this exists. I find myself snapping back to reality like, wait, this is real. It's not even a third party thing or like a straight upscale knockoff. This is a licensed product on general release and I didn't dream it. So I can only conclude that this toy exists exclusively for me. I manifested it somehow. <laughs> so I say to Super 7 the same thing I say to all my lovers. I don't know why you did that, but thanks. Right, that's what we call a Just For Daddy episode. Anybody still watching? Nobody cares but few. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Massive thanks to all the patrons, as always. Love you guys. Jonathan Snyder, you're my boy. Thank you so much, mate. Take it easy, kids. Be sure to subscribe for more Few's Awesome Transformers reviews. Limited appeal, keeping it real.